remember, do you guys remember how mechanisms work from the last chapter? Okay, how do they work? Just generally. Why, why are there arrows? Just let's, I want to, okay. Yay. I know, I know. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Before we dive head first into chapter 16. Let's see. So this is 16A. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do naming. That's you guys. And by the way, he brings all of these, like copy paste. So they're not that difficult. They're very few for you to actually memorize. Stuff that gets scary is here. It's not actually that scary. So since no one has actually reviewed the content, I'm just going to try to go through it as quickly as I can. I'm not going to write on the whiteboard. That's going to take too long to draw all the mechanisms over and over again. I'm going to annotate. This is being recorded, so I think that, yeah, you'll see, you'll see me writing. Let's move this down. So the whole point of this chapter, this slide here, this slide right now, is starting from a bunch of different things. How can we get to aldehydes? Okay. The first one that's listed for you is this. You're starting with, also, when you go to memorize these, uh, label what the hell is reacting with what. Don't just say RC, double bond, OCL is converted to. This is an acid halide or chloride in this case. How do I know it's a chloride? The chlorine atom. We're converting it to, write everything in English. We're converting it to what? An aldehyde. Converting it to an aldehyde. What are we converting it with? So what are we using? This weird, scary looking structure. The whole name for this is lithium, fry, tertiary, butoxy, aluminum hydride. In short, just LTBA. Okay? LTBA. You will need to know what this looks like. You do need to know what this looks like, just like this. So you don't need to know, I, you don't need to know this over here. So you guys can see me moving the, the cursor. Yeah. You don't need to memorize this. You would need to memorize this because if he asks you for the mechanism, you should know what it looks like because you're having an, you're involving this lithium, you're involving the aluminum, you're involving uh, the hydride that gets donated, which we'll look at in just a second. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. We're converting an acid halide into what? An aldehyde using LTBA, lithium, fry, tertiary, butoxy, aluminum, hydride. Okay. The mechanism for this is pretty straightforward. It looks scary because there's a lithium and there's an aluminum and then there's an O and then there's a three. It's very simple to remember. Okay. But I don't know if anyone had time to see the video I put on YouTube. I know that no one did because I wouldn't want to watch me talk for 22 minutes. I get fed up myself on a daily basis. Yeah, you watch me talk for two hours. Some people have that, dis the, that unfortunate pleasure. But basically the highlight of that, of me uh, uploading that video, was that what the hell is the point of a mechanism? How do we memorize it? The whole goal behind the mechanism is to do what? is to find the most productive step that's going to take me from my acid, from starting compound to our final product. So everything that happens in between is answering the question of what are the most productive steps that I can take to convert the starting compound into the final product? More specifically in this question, what are the most productive steps that I can take to convert my acid halide, what just happened, my acid halide into an aldehyde using this reagent? So let's look at what those most productive steps look like. The first thing that happens, also when you go to annotate lectures, because in the video I say annotate, don't just look at it and be like, yeah, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. Like, don't lie to yourself. Because you're going to go back and sit in the exam and be like, I have seen this before. If only I knew what it meant. So annotate it. So literally in English, on my slides and my notes for organic too, I would just do this. I'd be like, one, lone pair lone pair on oxygen goes to lithium. I would do that for every single step because then I would never forget it because now it's in English. So I can remember in the exam, be like, ah, oh, okay. So that lone pair goes to the aluminum. Do that for every single step. But to save time, I'm just going to read off what's happening. Okay, you can watch the recording and then take more detailed notes if you want. The first thing that happens is our acid halide our acid halide, 
will donate these lone pairs to lithium. This will form what? This will form a bond because remember, we're donating these electrons. We're going to form a bond here with lithium. When you form a bond with lithium, great. That's cool. How many bonds will oxygen now have? Over here, it had what? It had one and then it had two. When oxygen has three bonds, it has a charge of plus. Okay, perfect. So you guys remember this stuff. I can move a little bit faster. Great. That's the first productive step. Why did we do it? He's not going to ask you this, but because we want to pull more electrons this way. When we pull more electrons this way, what becomes susceptible? This carbon. What are we going to do? Look at our final product. We have a hydrogen. Do you guys see a hydrogen anywhere here? That hydrogen needs to come from somewhere. What in solution has a hydrogen for us? This hydrogen right here. So this hydrogen... Well, he's, he's redrawn the structure over here for you. You don't have to redraw the structure. You can just draw this H migrating over here and attacking. Okay? You don't need to redraw this. Once you build that hydrogen, let's clean up our, our diagram here a little bit. Once you donate that hydrogen, what's going to happen? Carbon, if you add this hydrogen, how many bonds would carbon have? Count. It would have five. One, two, three, four. Five. Can carbon have five bonds? No. Can only have four bonds. What's the most susceptible bond that we also just made very susceptible to break? It's this CO bond. So you're going to have the electrons move towards oxygen. You're going to have those. I'll draw that. It's right here. It's this thing. They're going to fall towards oxygen. Redrawing everything. We have our R over here. We have our R. We have our hydrogen that we just added. This hydrogen. Oh, another question that someone asked. Someone's like, didn't we add the hydrogen down here? So why isn't the hydrogen down here? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, the question of whether or not stereochemistry matters now, he doesn't cover it at all. So there's no need to stress about uh, if it's an R or if it's an S. This makes life so much easier. So you can draw the hydrogen wherever you want, as long as you still have the four bonds on your carbon and you have your Cl, your H, and your O. That's all that matters. Great. So now we can see that we're starting to match our final product, right? So remember what our final product is? This aldehyde. We have R, R. We have our carbon. We have our carbon. We have hydrogen. We have our hydrogen. We have this Cl that we want to get rid of. And also we still have this lithium that we want to get rid of. So we have to get rid of those. What's the best way to get rid of them? The bond between O and lithium is going to attack the aluminum. So you're getting rid of the lithium and replacing it with the aluminum. And that's what's shown here. You've replaced the lithium with aluminum, tritrium butoxide, whatever. But the most important thing is that you've bonded oxygen to aluminum, uh, aluminum now as a replacement for lithium. When that happens, you're like, okay, great. Now we just need to get rid of our Cl. To get rid of your Cl, look at your final product. Your final product looks like this. Remember, C. So we want to build a double bond somehow. What's the, what's the best way to build a double bond? By having either of these lone pairs build that carbonyl. So you have C double bond O. Once you have <coughs> C double bond O, carbon can have a maximum of how many bonds? Four. If you build that double bond, you're going to have, in theory, five. The most susceptible bond and also happens to be the bond that we want to get rid of, this C, C, O bond or the chlorine. The chlorine leaves. Great. Well, now we have our R, we have our H, we have our C double bond O, but we also have this aluminum that we want to get rid of. Well, let's see what else we have left in solution that we can use. In this case, it's water. Water is going to come in. It's going to attack the lithium. Once it attacks the lithium, this, a, uh, this O, A, L bond is going to break. The electrons collapse towards oxygen, and you end up with your aldehyde. Just like that. It seems very long because I had to run through it super slowly and draw the arrows all over again. But when you're doing this, I'm telling you, very quickly, you're going to pick up on this stuff and you'll be, be able to do it like the, you know, I don't know, like your ABCs. Is that something the kids say? Um, that, that's essentially it. And that repeats for every single mechanism that you look at throughout this chapter and the chapter after this. Okay? That's what I was saying on the group, guys.
Oh. Well, like people open the message like Abdul Hamid's message. Well, like Fadi, and then they put their phone down, and then when I'm like, yes, chapter 11, 12, and what was it, 15, are coming in chapter 16, A, 16, B. This question only uses one, two steps from the content we just covered. Everything else, huh? First question, lithium. <laughs> what am I saying, people? This see now everyone's awake. But it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the it's not the end of the world though. It's not the end of the world. Huh. You know what? Let's scare you guys even more since everyone wants to be freaking out. Lithium aluminum hydride, chapter what? 11, 12. The only sodium borohydride, the chapter 15. SOC is chapter uh, uh, 12 or 11. The only thing that is new is this. It's the only thing that's new. So it's not the end of the world. It just means you have to recognize patterns. You don't have to go back and revise chapter 11, 12, and 15. You guys did the midterm, right? What? Pro tip, since you're so short on time, get every single question. And instead of, do you see, you see what his R groups are? They're always what? Rings. When you go to, when you go to if you want to just purely memorize, take this question and literally just do R. C L R C H two. What is it? C H two N H two. C H two N H two. And memorize it blindly because now you have one less thing scaring you when you go look at that reaction. I'm gonna have to remove this from the recording. Because that's all he does. He will just always change the R group. Or if he gives you this question, he might bring this question copy paste, but he'll stop at this question. He'll stop here. Not the end of the world. As long as you memorize, not blindly, but you memorize with the goal of like actually knowing what the hell is happening. So don't just memorize, but like, ah, oh, okay, the CL somehow became CH2, CH2, NH2. Dope. That's not how it's going to stick in your brain. The only way it's going to stick in your brain is like, okay, I'm converting an acid halide into a primary amine using what? Step one, uh, lithium, aluminum hydride, tritrichobutoxy. Where have we seen this before? No, I, I'm actually expecting you to answer this. Dude, I'm going to give you guys just 10 seconds. 